Welkom, my name is Sandra Horlings and I will be your host for this Verijken webinar. You have just seen the opening of this brand new showroom located uh, in Ede, in the Food Valley, and we are broadcasting live. Uh, yesterday was the opening, uh, we'll uh, ask Bart later how it was, but today we will be talking about manure, and especially about a new business model for valorizing manure. I have uh, some in very interesting guests here at the table to help me understand this new business model. Gay Bakkes is here and he will explain why it's important and why now. We have René Veldman, he will uh, tell us more about the conditions for financing. We have Pierre Le Guillou uh, from France uh, who will uh, show a proven solution to you. And Bart Hoyer, uh, owner of Eike, he will share with you how he will bring this to the Dutch market. So, a, for, a warm welcome to all of you. It's great that we can meet up uh, here uh, under these conditions at a safe distance, uh, but also a very warm welcome to you, our audience, or can I refer to you as our participants? Because during this webinar, we really appreciate all your questions and remarks via the chat. How you can do that? Very easy. Just click on the button to open the chat, enter your name, and start asking questions. Please also mention who your question is for. And later on, you can, uh, via the same uh, uh, chat, vote in our poll. Uh, that's it. Easy, but highly appreciated. Although this session is in English, because we have international guests and international viewers, u kunt ook rustig een vraag in het Nederlands aan ons stellen via de chat. Uh, we zitten in Nederland, we kunnen met elkaar vertalen. En we spreken toch vandaag een beetje alles prachtig. When you are interested in visiting the showroom, it's open. Here we are at this splendid new showroom. Bart, why here? Why the showroom in Ede in the Food Valley? Thank you all. Sandra, thank you very much. You see the opening. Mr. Verrijken and uh, my parents opened the showroom. We are in uh, Ede to be closer to uh, our, all our customers. They are not only in Brabant, but they are everywhere. And uh, we, are also, uh, we also look forward to get inspired by the Food Valley, because we're very close to the Food Valley. So uh, that's why we are here. And we have a great opportunity to finally show what we have. Excellent. So uh, anyone interested, uh, the experience is open. Absolutely. Uh, I, Bart, I like what you're saying, because I know you, well, for quite some years now, and you always try to serve your clients and your customers. And then the other part of you is looking at what's next, what's around the corner. Uh, so, what is the timely topic to explore? And that is why we will be talking about manure and separating manure. Yeah. Gee Bakkes, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You have over 40 years experience in animal production, <laughs> in observing and helping to improve the system. And you bridge the gap between scientific and market insights to very practical solutions. Well then obviously you can maybe help us answer the question, why is separating manure important? It is important, in fact, for, let me say, three issues. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, the issue is the manure disposal cost. Dutch farmers, pig farmers, uh, have to pay high cost to comply with the manure legislation, and we talk about 25 euros per cubic meter, depending on the farm. Second is we need to reduce the emissions of uh, ammonia in the Netherlands. And third, that is a continuous issue to improve the indoor uh, climate in the barn. Okay, three issues. Let's see if we can tap into all of these three during yep. the session. René uh, Veldman, you are uh, manager of pig farming and manure at the Rabobank. Yep, well. You are serving 80% of Dutch farmers. So all your uh, uh, customers are probably watching us right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, why does the bank take an interest in separating manure? Well, uh, also for us as bank, we have our focus on sustainability. Yeah? Sustainability is very important in the Netherlands. And you know uh, the push from the government to reduce emissions, uh, to, to reduce the impact on the environment. And for us, uh, we like to help our customers uh, by realizing that, uh, to, uh, to solve that problem. Yeah. 
And we know from last year's protests that a lot of these uh, push comes, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, go straight to the farmers, but uh, we need to take all players in account, uh, don't we, in this ecosystem. Bart, uh, 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 thank you. You are the owner of Rijke. And uh, you said we should talk about this timely topic. Yeah, uh, but you also invited Pierre Le Guillou from France to join us. Yes. Absolutely. Why did you invite Pierre? Uh, to be very clear and very brief, it's a no-brainer. Um, we have a high, uh, a big issue in Holland, with, and the farmers pay a lot of money to get rid of the manure. Uh, there's a lot of activities going on now, that's really good. And on the other hand, in France, they are paying the farmers to get the manure. So it looks like we have a gap, and I think we, can, uh, we have asked uh, Coppel to, uh, to share the solution with us and, and to see if we can help our customers in Holland with this. Okay, thank yeah. you. Pierre, bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> Thank you for joining us from Brittany, France. Thank you. Uh, Pierre, that's a nice introduction that Bart gave uh, on you. Pierre, uh, um, maybe you can uh, uh, shortly tell something about the solution that Coupel uh, introduced uh, and why many French farmers are already using it. Um, yes, so TRAC is a system that separates uh, in the barn liquid from solid. So it's um, integrated in the building. It's done. It's part of the building, and we implemented it uh, in many farms right now. Okay. Well, that's interesting. When did you uh, start developing this uh, system, truck? We started to develop it uh, ten years ago. Uh, we started with uh, three uh, farms to to test it and to be sure that. Uh, Everything works, mm -hmm. and since then uh, we have uh, 92 farms uh, equipped with this system. 92 farms already in France? Yes. And uh, uh, would you say that uh, environmental uh, conditions are more or less compared in France to the Netherlands? Uh, is there an environmental issue as well, or was there 10 years ago when you started exploring? Yes, we have the same issues, uh, let's say, for the, but it's more concentrated on the land spreading mm -hmm. and less on the ammonia emission. We are less uh, on this point uh, in France. Okay, but that is uh, currently a big issue in the Netherlands, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, yeah. okay, uh, maybe uh, you brought that to the table. Yeah, <clears throat> because the uh, point is here also, why it is in the Netherlands uh, becoming more and more urgent, is that we uh, recently had some new uh, 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 decisions by, uh, by our highest court of uh, justice, uh, and that is related uh, to the nitrogen deposition. So the ammonia in the emission uh, ends up in nitrogen deposition on nature areas, and we have now some new uh, rules whereby the issue in the Netherlands is we need to reduce the ammonia emission, otherwise we cannot build houses and roads and our economy comes at a halt. So this is a highly a political urgent uh, issue uh, since uh, one or two years, and that makes it even more urgent. Yeah, so there is, uh, you could say, a healthy living uh, uh, part for all of us involved, yeah. but also a very uh, urgent economical uh, issue. Yeah. Okay, uh, Pierre, this truck system uh, that you developed and that all these uh, uh, 90 farmers are using? Yes. Okay. Over 10 years already? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it comes from uh, yeah, the, it's uh, from an increasing number, and uh, we still have new projects. We have six projects right now, mm -hmm. and we still intend to uh, innovate every day on, on this type of product because we strongly believe it's uh, the heart uh, or one heart of the buildings uh, for the future. Okay, well, that's interesting. Could you maybe uh, explain shortly the key components yes. of trucks? So help me understand how it works. The first thing is that uh, we didn't want the farmer to invest too much for the treatments, for the manure. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the basic idea was to uh, have to dimension, to size the system directly to the building. The second thing was the transport cost, because when you transport the manure, it's really expensive. When you separate, you only transport, in France, we only transport the solid part. So it's roughly it's one third mm -hmm. of the quantity. So, um, uh, you, so it's the di direct cost that you lower. And uh, we had um, already worked um, on the f organic fertilizer plant 
in Brittany. So the, the direct um, in, input of this fertilizer was the solid part. But during that time, during uh, the process of uh, this adventure, we discovered also that the solid part has uh, a potential methanization. So there is biogas inside. And you can create value out of this biogas by selling and becoming energy uh, producer. So now uh, you have the five components of the, of the track system. Okay, so if I understand correctly, you separate at the barn? Yes. The solid and the liquid manure. And then uh, the system is sizable to any size of barn? Yes. And you transport, the, in France, you transport the solid manure from the farm only? Yes, in a plant. Yes. Which is bi a biogas plant. Yes. Out of this biogas, we take off the digesta and we put it in a fertilizer plant and we make pellets that we can sell. And there is a market on pellets as well, organic pellets. And there is a worldwide market. So, okay. And it took us 15 years to create this market. Mm -hmm. But now we have this market. I mean, copper as a part of this market, let's say that. Yeah, it's actually, I really like that you say, okay, we have a, a challenge, a cost uh, component, and of how course. can we turn that into a new value stream? Yeah, it's changing manure from a waste, it's changing manure from um, uh, a product, an input. Yeah, that's very interesting, isn't it, Bart? Yeah, I think it uh, would be a great uh, idea if we can get this to Holland. Yeah. So uh, if you already have questions, please make sure that you add them to the chat because then we can uh, try to answer them uh, all. You said uh, many uh, farmers are using it. Uh, did we mention the profitability of the business case for the farmer? Uh, the farmer, he must invest um, roughly 150 euro more uh, than a classical barn for French uh, situation, which is they usually use fully slatted floors. Uh, then there is uh, some cost of uh, maintenance, mm -hmm. of course, but there is really low uh, input of electricity because it's only motors and they only work from time to time in the, in the day. And then uh, Coppel uh, is buying back 20 euro, uh, the, the solid, 20 euro per uh, ton, mm -hmm. the, the solid part of the manure. So it's, it takes between seven to 10 years to have a return on investment for the farms. Okay, and that's why you said, Bart, this is a no-brainer for the Dutch market. Instead of paying to get rid of the manure, uh, yeah. we see opportunities to yeah. both lower the operational costs, yeah. <clears throat> because I hear eh, less transport costs or less uh, energy costs, lower, maybe lower energy costs, as well as uh, um, well, creating new opportunities to sell some more. Yeah, René, you are nodding. Yeah, uh, yeah. Does that sound like uh, an interesting yeah, business a, case from a banker's that's, perspective? Yeah, that's, that's what we're we looking for. Huh? How is the, the business case developing? Is it uh, Do we get uh, higher revenues or is it just uh, lower costs? And this is one very important item to, uh, for, for lower costs. Huh? Yeah, okay. So uh, I am really uh, curious if you would bring this to the Netherlands. It sounds promising. I also hear some differences uh, between France and the Netherlands. But first look and listen uh, to a uh, farmer already using truck in France. Uh, we have a video ready uh, for you to look at this farmer. Hervé, producteur de porc sur la commune de Loargat avec un élevage de 1200 places en engraisement et 720 places en post sevrage Le principe du, du raclage est une séparation des phases sous, sous les porcs, donc la partie urine par gravité et la partie solide par les racleurs qui tombent dans une fumière en, en bout de bâtiment. Donc avec le système TRAC, euh, un avantage, c'est qu'il n'y a pas de, de stockage sous les animaux, donc euh, nettement moins d'émissions d'ammoniac euh, au niveau des bâtiments, donc euh, l'ambiance dans les bâtiments euh, est meilleure. Donc le choix du TRAC m'a également permis de rester autonome en, en plan d'épandage, puisque c'est le phosphore qui est limitant, et donc avec euh, l'exportation de la partie solide, euh, 
sur ces 300 places, il y a 80% du phosphore qui est, qui est exporté. Donc ça me permet de, de ne pas dépendre de tiers pour l'épandage. La partie solide est récupérée par la coperle pour alimenter le méthaniseur et les coproduits sont valorisés par Fertibial en, par le biais de différents amendements. La solution TRAC, c'est une solution d'avenir car elle résout différents problèmes entre des émissions de gaz telles que l'ammoniac et également au niveau environnement par rapport au phosphore. Yes, uh, I understand better how truck works now. I hope you also do. Pierre, it's uh, when uh, we were showing this video, uh, you started to smile like you are doing now, and you, you were proud of this farmer. Why? Did, what was it that you say, ah, oh, this is awesome that this farmer made this decision? Yes, uh, it was five years ago, and this farmer wanted to implement the truck system in an existing barn. And uh, this is the... And he was interviewed a few days ago, so you can see that five years after, uh, he's really satisfied and happy with the solution. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, uh, any questions, please uh, place them in the chat. Cheyenne, I am also curious what our audience is thinking up to now. Could we collect some input from the participants? Yes, uh, sure, Sandra, uh, because before we go back to the roundtable discussions, we want to do a quick check-in with you. So even if you haven't done so already, please fill in your name so you can participate in the chat and the poll. And uh, you only have to press vote and then you can uh, submit your answer. Uh, because the question is, what do you consider the biggest challenge to implement a system such as TRAC? Uh, are you thinking about, well, how, how am I going to finance this? Then please select upfront investments. Are you thinking about, um, yeah, but how do I make sure that I can actually sell the solid manure? Uh, please select a lack of guarantee of, of selling solid manure. If you are uncertain about uh, return on investments, of course, you can select that one. And if uh, you are wondering about, um, yeah, if it allows you to be certified for a low emission system, please uh, select that answer. So please press vote, let us know what you think, and come on with these questions because uh, these uh, speakers uh, will answer them for you. So do we already have the results uh, in on the questions? I think uh, we uh, go back to Sandra in a few uh, seconds. And uh, if, um, yeah, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. There are very interesting speakers at the table and they are all willing to uh, answer your questions. Uh. Thank you, Cheyenne, for uh, uh, well, conducting this short poll. Uh, please let us know what was the winning answer. Um, René, uh, I um, well, have some risky assumptions here as well. Uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, there are some uh, people that say, okay, I really uh, am curious about the upfront investments or about the return on investments. Um, listening to this, if you were to finance such a system, what would be the conditions? Well, I don't think that the upfront investment may not be the problem. Huh? So uh, I think more important, how is the business case? And, and ba our basic attitude is positive, of course. Eh? We, we, we find this kind of technical solutions is very important for the Netherlands. Eh? If, if those solutions will not come, uh, uh, the chance that, uh, that there comes an, uh, a reduction of the pig herd is very big, a shrinking of the herd, is, that's not that we, that we want. So, but if customers ask us for a loan eh, to invest here in, uh, uh, we have to look at it, of course, case by case. Eh? How is the start, uh, the beginning period? Eh? How is the starting position? Eh? Uh, how are, were the revenues in the past? Eh? How is the equity? How is the loan to value? And but but most of, of important, of course, is what is the business model for the future? Eh? Yeah, so let's, before we go into this business model, uh, because uh, you know me, eh? uh, I am uh, a pig farmer. I've been farming at the Rebobank for uh, over 40 years. Um, well, my, my, my mom and, and my dad uh, already were close clients, so you know my starting position. I know your family, yeah. Yeah, so uh, let's assume it's uh, a good starting point. Uh, uh, there's one more, uh, because this is on the return on investment. There's, in the poll, I see that there's also uh, a high interest in uh, certification. 
So who would, could answer on how this will help uh, get the certification? Bart, would you like to answer this? Yeah, it's, uh, thank you. Um, I do understand uh, that this is the, the biggest challenge because in Holland we have a big challenge in reducing ammonia. Uh, 70% in Brabant, 85%, but Gay knows everything about it. And we have been looking uh, at the business case of reducing ammonia, and we will also certify it for uh, this list, mm -hmm. so it can be used for, to reduce ammonia. But the question is, is the real business case, uh, do we find it in the reduction of ammonia, or do we, do we need to find it somewhere else? And uh, I don't want to tell everything, so I will leave it up to Gay, but I do understand it. But there have to, I think we, we have to deal with this uh, anyway, uh, but uh, the real business case will not be in reduction of ammonia for this system. Okay, but if certification is to have a license to operate, exactly, exactly. can we then maybe yeah. say, uh, look at the license yeah. to sell? Huh? Because Verijke has asked you to crunch the numbers and to yeah. really see what yeah. would make a great business case. Yeah. Could you, if you, yeah. if you look at this business case, what are the key variables that will make up the business case? Yeah. So uh, the, the key uh, variables are, and now I only talk about the hard components, because of course ammonia emission and technical results also are part of the decision-making process. But for the uh, business case, uh, when you want to apply, for example, for a loan, there is the additional investment cost, that's one, and second, the manure disposal cost, and that's composed of two elements, the uh, cost for the, thick, uh, for the uh, thick fraction, as well as for the liquid uh, fraction. Those are the three elements. What is the reduction of the uh, cost in terms of uh, uh, the thick fraction, and the second uh, part, the liquid fraction, and then the uh, benefits of those two have to be higher than the annual cost of the in additional investment. That's in fact uh, the dimensions of the business case. <laughs> yeah, okay, well that's interesting. I heard Pierre say, eh, in France you pay 150 euro. euro. Per, per place, per fattening place. Okay, per fattening place. So how, how much would that be per uh, pig? So I would say if we take uh, on, in the Netherlands on average, I could say per pig place we produce uh, 300 kilogram slaughter weight. That's a rough guideline. So that per means year. Uh, per year, yeah. Per, per year, year, yes, and uh, that means that if you have an additional investment of 150 euros per pig place, then we talk about seven and a half cent uh, per kilogram uh, uh, slaughter weight as terms of, as a cost price. Okay, ten but years, that's ten years amortization, and that's yeah, yeah ten it years, is. maybe for slaughtering pigs, uh, th 12, 13 years. Huh? But uh, there is hard uh, hardware on the building, and also there is mechanic. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but let's say roughly, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. Ten. yeah. Okay, Bart, if we uh, because this is the French market, yeah. French situation, it's fully slattered. Yeah. What is the situation <clears throat> in, the, in the Netherlands? What would that mean for a farmer considering to? Uh, well, implement truck. Yeah. Now there's one big uh, difference with France is that in, uh, in Holland we uh, we need to have 40% uh, closed floor. Uh, let's talk about finishes, and this means also that uh, the investment, uh, the, the number of scraping capacity that you need, can also be reduced by 40%. So uh, we have made a, an estimation that this cost of 150 euro will go down by 40% because we have only 60%, say 90 to 100 euro investment per finisher place. Okay. So, um, of course, uh, it will differ, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's of course, but uh, this will be, because we need, to, we need less capacity to scrape, mm. less surface to scrape. Yeah. Okay, that's well, that's say. interesting. It's related to the surface, I mean. Yes. So. And, so, and that is interesting to know what the, the amount is. For, uh, sorry, yeah. No, go ahead. Of, so, what, what is the cost of per piglet then? Yeah. So then, uh, if you have uh, uh, this uh, reduction of 40 percent, then of course uh, we have to consider how much of it is related to the 150 euros and how much of it is the fixed component uh, for the equipment itself. But let us say the fixed part is 30 euros and the 120 uh, euros is related to the surface, exactly. then I would say you go down roughly to from 150 to 100 euros, and then that would be per kilogram slaughter weight, that would be five cents. 
Keun. Oh, Alain. First and one of us. Yes. Yeah, uh, René, you uh, make the calculations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the table. I, I don't agree. I don't see your calculator, so. <laughs> yeah, I already have that on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's right. Huh? If, if, you, um, if, if it's 100 euro and then in 10 years valorization, it's 10 euro uh, per year for 300 kilometers. It's 3 to, to 5 cents per kilo slaughter weight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but, yes, go ahead. But then, uh, of course, the benefit has to be at least those five uh, cents. That's the issue, and that depends on what is the uh, the benefit in terms of the thick uh, fraction, uh, and the second one, of course, for the liquid fraction. And roughly said, if we assume the thick fraction is 33% and the liquid one is 66, mm. uh, yeah, then it's a question of, uh, in fact, what is the reduction on the thick fraction and on the liquid fraction. and for. Just to give you an idea, if we would say we could reduce, and that depends, of course, on how, how capable are we in valorizing this, but if you could reduce this by, uh, for the sake fraction, uh, with, uh, let me say, 20 euro, just to think about it aloud. As we do in France, it's 20 euros. Okay, so <laughs> as you, and then I would say that you could reduce the manure disposal cost by around 12 euros because it's a part of the total uh, and 12 euros again the 300 kilogram René yeah, yeah, that's four yeah. cent uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we need to keep it simple in terms of uh, rough if guideline you, and if you look to the to the to data from Interpeak huh, roughly the the the, the, the the average manure cost in the Netherlands for slaughter pigs is about seven or eight cent per kilogram slaughter rate. So if you can reduce it by 50 percent, huh, or more, four cent, no, that's... Uh, yeah, but I think uh, that also is important what uh, will be the, the case with the liquid fraction. Yeah. yeah. Because, uh, yeah, once you can do something there, that will uh, improve because it, the three elements are always the, uh, the annual additional investment cost, the benefit on the thick fraction, and the reduction of the cost of the liquid fraction. Those three yeah, yeah. you have to take into account, and all other elements like ammonia emission and technical results are important. But in terms of a financing, a business case, we talk about it's those plus, three. Yeah? Well, mm. That's a benefit. Yeah. So maybe we can yeah. go to you, uh, Pierre, because uh, you explained that in France you only transport the solid manure. Could mm. you explain what could happen with the liquid manure and how could Coupel maybe help uh, close this uh, business case? In France, the cost of treatment for a farmer, uh, it's uh, between two to five euro per, uh, per cubic. So uh, it's uh, really much cheaper that uh, is the situation here. But in some case, uh, we, have, uh, we had to find a technical solution and we have the technical solution to strip the liquid phase. But the more easiest way to do is to find um, uh, land that really accepts this uh, urine, I mean, and this liquid phase, which is really interesting for some farmers. But you could uh, build the business case on solid, and you will have to look at the liquid. Uh, in fact, it's more important like this. There is a real issue. We cannot uh, build a business case if we have, we, if we have not found the solution for the liquid part. Okay. Bart, the could you, yeah. for the farmer. Yeah, because Bart, that is uh, uh, what we need here in yeah. the Netherlands. Yeah, we have uh, invited them here to uh, find a solution for our farmers, for their business case, for their, for their benefits. And uh, what we are feeling here is that because the solid, there is an upswing on the solid, uh, you can make money of it, but there, it's only one third. So two thirds is still uh, a big, uh, is still, is still there. Uh, and then. Uh, so we, it's, it's combined to each other. If we make a big premium or a big thing on the, the solid part, then still the impact is low because it's only one third of the total manure. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Pierre, uh, talking about the solid manure, would you be, uh, uh, do, what kind of premium do you have in mind for the solid manure? Mm. <clears throat> First, I, I would say that uh, Copel is, um, uh, we, are, we are here to help the farmers to find solutions. First, the Dutch farmers. Yes. But we are not here to invest instead of farmers. We are here. We can help. We can provide technology, but we are not here to invest. You are a cooperative, aren't you? 
Yes. So you yeah. collaborate always in the cooperative. Yes, we co collaborate and we are owned by farmers, so they are, they are ready to help as well. Uh, if we want, what we want to do uh, is to help to start this value chain of the manure. Mm -hmm. And we can help this uh, by collecting the, in the first cases, we can collect manure and introduce this manure in our market for valorization. So there could be a premium on this, but um, uh, we have to explain it case by case. We have to work it case, case by case. Mm -hmm. And the premium we could uh, we have in mind is more or less it's five euros as a start, but we have certain conditions. Uh, the conditions to solve the liquid issue, and to also be sure that there is a chain that is coming, and we can find yeah. industrial investors uh, who are ready to invest in this chain. Because you understand, it's not only farmers; it's the whole chain. We have to make it to make it work. So what puzzles me is, uh, um, uh, I feel like a European, however, I see a lot of uh, uh, differences between the markets here. Uh, Bart, I hear this uh, uh, benefit on the solid manure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I see changing the business model and the opportunities, but I also hear uh, uh, we have to solve this liquid manure, yep. so this two-thirds. How could we approach this? If you were to bring this to the Dutch market, yeah. all these farmers will probably come to you and they mm -hmm. say, what's next? So how could you uh, approach this liquid uh, issue? Yeah, the, so what we, uh, what, we, uh, what we know is that we have a proven concept that works and the valorization works also in France. Yeah? So that's, this is something that, that's, that is there. But we have a new market with its own issues and its own uh, problems. And uh, it would be really nice to come up and like, just copy it, but we have to uh, look, uh, find farmers to work with us on the business case and make individual business cases to see what we can do with this liquid and what, we can, what kind of premium we can give on the solids. Only th this is the only way because we, we do not have experiences here in Holland. So we cannot say this is it, this is the amount, this is the amount. We need mm -hmm. to make rotation and make it happen, and then we have to learn from it, and then we can find, can get more grip on the data and on the, on the prices. Yeah. But, but I, I'm, I'm very pleased that Coppel is, is at least uh, helping us here to, to make the start. Yes. You know, that they are opening their market, and it, it has also, what we also need to do, is to be aware that we are going to build it here in Holland. Huh? It's not sustainable to drive everything to France, of course. It's a good vision that we want to make it happen here in Holland. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really pleased by this offer, to be honest. And I think we have to look for 10 farms to, to, to make a good case. Okay. We know that it takes time to create this chain. Uh, investment takes time. And we are willing to, to help to start. <laughs> so we only we need activate. We Let's need team, activate. ten farmers that are willing to partly open up their books for us yeah. to help us calculate what will be the impact on uh, their uh, profitability if yes. they uh, uh, yeah. join us to launch truck in the Netherlands. Yeah. And I've, uh, I've got some. We have some good news. We are also investing as Verrijke in this uh, business. So uh, we have hired uh, a lady who is going to help us with uh, developing this uh, market and these business cases together with the farmers. So um, Excellent. So more ladies at the table. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and doing the calculations. I like ah. that. <laughs> Don't you? Yeah. So um, this is all about the operational side exactly. of things. So this is about how can we better perform, how can we, if we make an investment, lower the costs and create new revenue streams. I am curious because, uh, uh, well, obviously I'm not a big farmer, but I am a consumer. I am a shopper uh, and I um, still once in a while eat uh, a nice uh, schouder carbonaatje. <laughs> uh, so a, a bit of pork or a bit of uh, meat. Um, so I'm curious, what about the market side? And Cheyenne went to the supermarket to interview some consumers. How would they feel about uh, 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 something that would lead to maybe low carbon meat? Uh, uh, would they be willing to consider this and to maybe pay more for it? Cheyenne, uh, well, let's take a look at this video. Oh, 
je op als je vlees koopt? Uh, meestal op de houdbaarheidsdatum, snel ik op. Ja. En uh, of het gezond is. Uh, in hoeverre speelt milieu impact bij vlees uh, voor uw rol? Uh, dat weet ik niet echt. Ik kijk af en toe op, op nieuws wat er allemaal uh, gebeurt. Maar, uh, ja. Als ik dan eerder hoor dat allemaal. Uh, het Amazonegebied helemaal gekapt wordt, dan denk ik dat dat veel meer invloed heeft op het milieu als wat wij hier in Nederland hebben. En hoe ver speelt milieu impact bij vlees bij jouw rol? Uh, het eten van vlees heeft natuurlijk een hele grote impact op het milieu. Dus wanneer je vlees hebt dat, waarvan de impact op het milieu minder belastend is, dan, dan is dat sowieso een rol. Oké, okay, en um, als... Um... Als er dan met minder uitstoot geproduceerd is, wat zou je dan, hoe zou je dan willen dat dat gecommuniceerd ook wordt? Uh, ik denk de carbon footprint van vlees zou vergelijking. Want ik heb natuurlijk geen benchmark wat uh, in mijn hoofd wat de carbon footprint van een koe, varken in verschillende omstandigheden is. Maar dat is het yeah. meest voor de hand. Dus je zou willen weten hoeveel beter het is uh, yeah. dan ja. Oké, okay, nou dankjewel. <laughs>Oké, okay, so I hear one out of three uh, consumers saying I might consider willing to pay more for low carbon meat. Bart, why would low carbon meat come from such a solution? Now, that's uh, interesting. Um, there are a lot of companies busy with uh, lowering the carbon footprint. And uh, manure has a big impact on that. And by reusing the manure and making energy of it, we can really lower the carbon footprint inc incredibly. It's, uh, we're talking about 40 to 50 percent on the, on the part the manure is causing. And I think that is about 40 to 45 percent on the total carbon footprint of meat. So that is a big uh, step if we can lower the carbon footprint with this system. It's more than a bijvangst. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's just something that comes up and uh, what, yeah, it's, uh, we should do this. Yeah, so let's bring in the expert on this. Uh, Stan Quentin, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Excellent, thank you so much for joining us. Um, where, where are you calling from or from Son, I think? Yes, from the south of Holland where a lot of pigs are. Ah, beautiful, <laughs> yes. And always very nice people. So thank you for joining us. You are the director for Best Star Meat, and you have yes. recently launched a new concept, Varken op zijn best. Pick yes. at its best. And uh, if I am informed correctly, the main benefit for consumers is this low carbon meat, and it's already available in the supermarkets. Is that correct? It's, uh, it's already uh, in, on the shelf, but it's not communicated by the supermarkets at the time being. Um, it's mainly based on uh, health, uh, be better health for the for the pig, and also by uh, trying to have a, a full, uh, yeah, be able to conduct the supply chain. And uh, we are looking to reduce carbon footprint. And to, to do that, uh, we are very curious uh, how we can get things going together with the truck, because we strongly believe in the system. Well, thank you for your uh, uh, commitment uh, thus far. Uh, I see this really nice uh, image uh, of the logo, the label. Uh, you say it's not communicated yet in the supermarket, but is it the intention to use this label? It, it, at least, let me say, it's our intention to use the label. What we see happening in Holland, of course, is uh, that uh, all the supermarkets are mainly communicating uh, their, uh, their private label. And that's their brand. Um, so that will be, that will be a, a longer uh, period that yeah that we will need to get that thing going. On the other hand, we also supply to uh, industrial uh, uh, um, customers, and from that end, there's, there's, they are prepared to put the system of the label into their into their system and into their the communication, because yeah with with the, with yeah with the. Um, um, with the logo, we can, you can really see that things are done correctly. And that's what it's all about. The consumer are trusting that we as a supply chain and supermarkets are taking care of the environment, taking care of the animals. Yeah, but I also know from a, a, a market perspective that you also need evidence for these claims that you bring to the market. Eh? Uh, so helping, yes. 
uh, and, and I think having a label will enhance the conversation. So people might ask questions, oh, what is this? What kind of mise is this? And how is it better for me or for the environment? Uh, uh, so I also like that it's very clear for people to make a, a different choice and to also uh, not only maybe in public opinion share their views on pig farming, but also in their behavior, in their shopping behavior, make a different choice. Do you see this happening? Do you see customers willing to pay for, um, well, maybe a more animal-friendly uh, meat or uh, uh, a more animal-friendly uh, way of, or more environmental-friendly uh, way of conducting your business? What I see happening is that the same what you saw happening on the animal welfare system called Better Living in Holland. Uh, there is no other choice for consumers to buy uh, uh, regular meat anymore. And uh, if the differentiation in price is only a few cents, they 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 will probably go for the, the, the cheaper meat um, because they are not aware of everything yeah. what's done in the supply chain. So in my opinion, we should more uh, try to uh, organize together with the, the retailers that we only have this kind of meat on the shelf. Yeah, because I see. if we want to keep on farming, if we want to keep on keep farming pigs, then we need to make sure that it's accepted in the society, and that's the biggest struggle in Holland. Yeah, I see uh, uh, you nodding, uh, Pierre. Uh, uh, well, is this uh, this is also an issue I think in France and uh, French consumers? It's, it's everywhere. Uh, the consumer they are not really ready to pay more, so. We, as a provider of equipment, and we, as a cooperative uh, in France, and provider of solution, uh, probably, and I hope, in, in, uh, in Netherlands, uh, we have to find uh, competitive solutions. We cannot uh, let the farmer pay for this. Yeah. Because we know that the consumer won't pay for this. Okay, so that is why you why you looked and you said, okay, where can we find new value from manure? Yeah. Excellent uh, bridge. Lowering yeah. ammonia is a right. Or lowering yeah. uh, carbon footprint is a right to produce. Yeah. But there is no money out of this right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a right. I hear, and Stan, I hear you also uh, uh, agreeing uh, here. Uh, it's a future right, <laughs> let's say this. Would you like we, to... We, 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 have, we always talk a lot about the people, planet and profit. If you want to take care of this planet, then we need to organize it this way across the border. So we need to organize it this way. That for me is, no, is not a discussion at all. Yeah. It's, it's a new standard that we need to, 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 uh, to adhere to. So in my experience, when we uh, work with a lot of uh, companies to really try to build circular innovations, we know that collaboration is key, but also sharing the revenues throughout the value chain. So my question to you, Stan, is will uh, pig farmers also benefit from this uh, uh, if we raise the bar? Uh, is there uh, uh, something in it for the pig farmers? Uh, if he can re reduce his uh, cost price, of course, there's a benefit for him. So we, I don't think if he can reduce his cost price that we should take that money off him. Though that's one thing. <laughs> but if he can, so, so uh, that, 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 let, let me say it that way. That's one thing. But secondly, that's more important. If we can all communicate about the effort that's been uh, put into the supply chain, then we should also be able to raise prices across uh, the, the, the range a little bit and that get and get that money back to the farmers who are prepared to invest. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Um, if you see what's happening in Holland with Beter Leven, it's about 25% of our pig herd that uh, is, uh, is, is used for uh, supplying the Dutch retail. So that 25%, if we can organize it that way, that all those 25% is uh, using track system, Mm -hmm. So that's a lot more than in France at the moment, to be honest. But th 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 then it will be accepted, I think, by the consumer. It will be accepted by retail. And then a, it's, a mm. it's a new standard. Yeah, it's educating, growing awareness and raising the bar together, isn't it? Yes, that's what it's all about. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing this uh, with us. Uh, René, yeah. once again, you already know me uh, uh, as a pig farmer. You know my family. Uh, I hear a very <laughs> solid... Uh, uh, business case. So I hear uh, lower costs. I hear an opportunity for a new revenue stream. Yep. 
I hear uh, the challenge of the liquid part, but collaborating to help solve that in the Netherlands, specifically here in the Netherlands. I hear there is an opportunity for low carbon meat in the supermarkets. I hear fresh air for the piglets, so better living conditions for the pig, pigs and the piglets, as well as maybe for the working conditions for everyone working in a farm, uh, and uh, uh, less ammonia. Yeah, yeah. So, does that make financing feasible? Uh, it sounds all positive, eh? so <laughs> who am I to say it's, it's not possible? But no, uh, it's still, it, 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 it looks very good, and it, it is the future. It is very important for the future for the farmers, but also for the whole pig industry in the Netherlands. And uh, I think Stan is right, it will become uh, a standard in the future. And, and developments will go on. Uh, this is, uh, I hope, uh, the first tables will come to the Netherlands very soon. Yeah. And, uh, well, uh, the, the, there are some, some things we have to solve. Uh, for example, those, those, uh, those liquid parts. But that's also case by case. If it's a pig farmer with a lot of, with a lot of land, it's easier to spread that liquid part over his own land. Uh, otherwise, if there's no land, well, we have to get, okay, what's then uh, the solution? Eh? Do we have this uh, nitrogen stripper or something else? Exactly. So it's case by case, and, but it, it will become the standard in the future. I'm, I'm sure about that. Okay, well, then this is what you mean by a no-brainer, uh, Bart. Yeah, but that is a very important uh, uh, thing he says. So see, if, if we have an, an extra investment, it's already difficult to get license and investment and an extra investment. And you know, where there are a lot of developments that are extra investment, but, but to get it financed, it's uh, if we, to get it financed, it's uh, it's difficult. So uh, for me, it's really important to know the conditions of where the farmers have to uh, build a business case on because a lot of energy, is, they, they put a lot of energy in it, a lot of conversation, a lot of, uh, and then we can really present a business case that it's like, that gives a go. Yep. 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 Okay, well then I'm hoping it will become a feature springer. Eh? C'est la coule de source, Pierre. <laughs> Stan, uh, thank you for sharing uh, uh, your insights. Uh, and uh, you, please stay with us because you may have a question from the audience that you can answer. Uh, because uh, Cheyenne, uh, uh, I am really curious to see what questions did come in via the chat. questions over here, a few on the business case, a few more on the truck system. Uh, so maybe we can start with the business case because uh, G, there was a question here from uh, Christoph. Uh, you talked about 150 euro per space uh, more, but is that for the traditional barn or a barn with an air washer? So the question is, you talked about this 150 euros investment. That was only uh, France, uh, Cheyenne. Yeah. Uh, and in the Netherlands, it's lower. But the question is, is that for a traditional barn or for a barn with an air washer? This is uh, for both because the, uh, the air washer is important, but it's not an element of the business case. Uh, the uh, 150 euros and then depending on the percentage of slatted floor which will reduce it to approximately 100 that is really about uh, the truck system so it uh, the air washer i think that we in the netherlands for the coming years have uh, still have need to have this air uh, washer mm. uh, independent or not because if the truck system reduces 50 percent that's important for uh, the environment for the uh, for the nitrogen problem that we have, but for the business case of the individual individual farmer, he probably still needs to have this air washer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. Let's be realistic about yes. it. Yeah, right. The truck system avoids the creation of ammonia, but only 50%. So you, st you still need to have some steps to, to reach the, the, yeah. the standards needed in the uh, Netherlands right Because now. in the major part of the Netherlands you need to reduce, if you renovate your farm, you need to reduce ammonia by 85%. Mm. And you cannot match it up with the 50%, you mm. could have combination with other 
uh, measures, but that will become very complicated. So from yeah. my perspective, we need to focus in this business case on the hard components, the additional investment cost of the truck system, and the benefits need to come from the manure disposal cost. Yeah. And the reduction in ammonia emission is important, but we cannot uh, capitalize on it. That's the point. Yeah. No, and you're right, and that's why we, we really want to go for the, sev the minimum of the 70 percent, so we, it get, it's, it's get, we can present it also for this case. But it's not the business case, yeah. because we spoke to a lot of farmers already, and they, they want also to stay working with the air scrubber, not because it's more than only ammonia, it's also a dust and, and smell and stuff like this. And, um, it is also the inside how we started with reducing ammonia, but we ended up with the business case on the menu. Yeah, well, thank you for yeah. sharing it. I hope this answered your question. Cheyenne, was there another question in the chat? Yes, there was another question. Thank you for answering that one. Uh, because there was also a question, uh, is this uh, already implemented in a farrowing system or barn as well, or only in other parts of the barn? Okay, Pierre, could you maybe uh, answer that one? Is this already uh, implemented in a barn with a farrowing system? Uh, right now, it's implemented in a lot of fattening. Let's say 90% is for fattening pigs. We have uh, some farms with gestation uh, barns, and some tried as well for the uh, post-winning uh, barns. But we didn't implement it at all for farrowing because the emission there uh, we consider is really low. So the <laughs> it's difficult to find the <coughs> manure. <laughs> you don't have a lot. <laughs> So you pay and you don't have the revenue. So. Yeah. yeah, Bart, you would like to uh, add? Yeah, it's, uh, but we do get questions for this because um, in some concepts like two stars or biological uh, organic uh, farms, they are using straw. Exactly. And this is a good way to get rid of the straw. They have a few cases that they can handle straw. Mm -hmm. So if you give straw and it gets into the, in the manure, normally it's a problem. But now with this system, you can also scrape the straw out. So now we get some requests for uh, farrowing systems as well. Yeah. Yeah. So now you say scrape, to, uh, scrape it out, eh? you, you refer to the system as a scraper, don't yes. you? And um, there is room for innovation, there is still room for innovation and we have some projects and some new products in the future. We have things in mind and of course we are thinking of uh, biology, uh, let's say organic farms and their need even in farrowing. So it's not the first time we have this question. <laughs> but the amount of uh, the amount of manure from a fairing <coughs> room is not a lot, of course. No. Yeah? So it's, mm -hmm. uh, you have to see it in the total picture. If yeah. uh, can you do it at once with the total farm, or uh, yeah. Well, thank you, uh, Cheyenne. Is there another question? Yes, there is another question because uh, Erica says uh, there are already uh, systems that separate uh, the thick and the thin fraction and the liquid and the solid from each other. Uh, what makes this uh, product and this business case uh, again so uh, yeah so different? Can you please hi highlight it one more time? Okay, so I think Pierre, this is a question to you, and it's a very straightforward question. How is the truck system better do than uh, other uh, alternatives in the market? Mm. First, uh, what we patented uh, uh, is the we focused on the separation of the liquid and the solid. So there is uh, three slopes, so two slopes uh, in the one corridor under the ground, and another slope to evacuate the liquid part uh, by gravity. And it's really specific. So you evacuate the liquid from in one side, yeah. and you evacuate the solid in another side. And as far as I know, this is the only system that proposed this. So you get a better separation, and you get a better thick phase or solid phase, what we call it differently. Uh, uh, this is more efficient. Um, and the other thing is track system is a part of the solution. Yeah. And the, is, this is the, the, what we talked about uh, since one hour. The other part is the, the, the rest, is to stretch until creating the, the value. That's what we, is different. OK. This was a question from Erica Cheyenne. I hope uh, we've answered your question. Yes, it was uh, from Eric, so oh, from Eric. <laughs> and uh, we have another question uh, because uh, is it also, um, yeah, Pierre, is it also applicable to existing barns and what needs to happen if you want to apply to an existing barn? 
Yeah, so Pierre, question for you. We already saw part of the answer because your farmer eh, that implemented it five years ago was implementing it in an existing bar. But could you shortly explain, if I have an existing bar, how would this work if I were to implement truck? Uh, what is needed is you need to take off uh, the, the ground. Uh, we, we need uh, an empty... You can keep the, the shell of the, the barn, but you need to take out, take out everything in the barn mm -hmm. so that we can organize the implementation of the ground under the floor and organize the flow of the solid part and the liquid part because you have to evacuate it from the barn. So it's only made by a dedicated study. You have to go there to, to study everything and to talk with the, the one uh, who will deal with the shell as well because uh, we don't want to fragilize the, the barn. So. so it's tailor-made in that way. Exactly. It's custom-made, tailor-made. And th yeah. that's why uh, uh, we, we will have a person, or Pereshken will have a person dedicated to this uh, here. Yeah, so you have a rep representative that will visit you, uh, that will look at the barn, that will look at the books. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, and that will uh, calculate the business case uh, per farmer that would like to consider yeah. this? Like a normal finisher farm is a pretty straightforward. It has a corridor and some rooms. So you can separate the, the liquid part on one side, and you can separate the solid part on the other side, and you can use the corridor to get the solid out, you know, collect it and get it out. Mm -hmm. That's pretty straightforward. And we can have a look at the part that is slatted, like is it big enough to put a scraper in, or do we have to take away a wall or not? So I think it's pretty straightforward. We need to look at the dimension of the, the slatted floor. See, if it's only one meter, it's going to be difficult. But if it's uh, close to two meters or more, then we have a good option that we can just implement it. Okay. Huh? We, we have people, engineers, dedicated to this uh, in France, and they are really willing, and we are willing to help also, mm -hmm. to deal with those uh, tailor-made uh, situations. So, Pierre, just to clarify for the viewers, because we introduced you shortly as developing this system, what kind of uh, uh, people work at Coupel? Because it's a cooperative of pig farmers. Now you say we also have engineers. You have a whole team overlooking the uh, pig farm to fork. Uh, maybe you could, could you elaborate a bit on, on who's uh, Coupel? Coupel is a cooperative dedicated to pig uh, industry. And we have eight branches, uh, so it's from uh, the farmers' uh, services, to nutrition, slaughterhouse, processed meat. We have butcheries, distribution. We have an uh, industry dedicated to, to environment, to a lot of uh, circular economy, and equipment branch, which I'm leading. <laughs> um, and this equipment branch is really de dedicated to uh, provide equipment, but it's not only equipment, it's a farm, each farm is different. It's the case in Brittany, in France, but everywhere in the world. There is two, not two farms exactly the same. So. so I recall that Bart was saying when we started this conversation, Pierre is a, a, a good partner, but also a trustworthy partner. Uh, yeah. And I think uh, maybe the size and also stretching the whole chain uh, will give you a good overview of what's the need in the market. Yeah, thank you for clarifying. A uh, final question, Cheyenne, a short one. Yes, very short one, because uh, you discussed that you're still looking for um, what to do with the liquid part. Uh, but Pierre, uh, what are they doing in France uh, with it? Ah, excellent. And then we bridge into the 10 farmers that we need. The liquid part uh, in France, uh, is uh, co the, the constitution is 45% of the nitrogen but lower than 10% of the phosphorus. This is really important because some uh, land, they need nitrogen, but the limit is phosphorus because you cannot put too much phosphorus in the land. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we spread it <coughs> in the land, but where it's needed, and you can, more, uh, it's really liquid, you know, uh, and it's really uh, appreciated by the farmers and the land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, but... That's, uh, the, that's the usual uh, output. And for some farmers who don't have the land, we have this stripping system. Stripping system. Stripping, yes. Uh, 
Yes, well, there's so much more to discover <laughs> yes. here about this. Uh, we can talk for hours. But uh, maybe, uh, Bart, you said we are looking for 10 farmers, front runners, that would be willing to consider this, yep. that would be willing to open up their book, to have us look at the farm, yep. uh, uh, and then uh, have a discussion with uh, René to see, can we finance this? Yeah, we look forward to do that. Huh? Yeah. And we have, we have uh, some really nice contacts, some really uh, int motivated uh, farmers already uh, that are uh, working with us, uh, are looking for opportunities to get on uh, to lower the ammonia, uh, which is actually the, the entree, so to say, for this mm -hmm. uh, discussion. Uh, but we would like to go for this RIV list, of course, and we need more farmers to cooperate because we need a benchmark of every farmer, two fairing rooms, two finishers, etc. We uh, have to finalize this uh, yeah. last sentence, Bart, because we are running so, out of time. So uh, we are. Uh, we would really like to be, be, be uh, in contact with, with ten, uh, yeah, potential uh, farmers who are interested to talk about uh, with us and to make a dedicated business case. Yeah. yeah, and you are also very welcome to first visit the showroom here because that was the opening part of this session. I forgot I, to say it's, it is here, of course. You can see it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> if there are more questions running in, what we will do is we will collect them all. We will try to answer them in a, a newsletter. If you have not subscribed to the newsletter of Rijke, please do so. Next week, you can in, uh, expect an email with a link to the recording of this uh, webinar. Uh, and if you would like to, uh, um, well, uh, raise your hand to say, I am a front runner, send an email straight to Bart to uh, make sure that you're first on the list to uh, get a visit uh, from. Absolutely. Um, this was a Vereike webinar in a series of three. We will discuss later today uh, data and traceability and also uh, uh, farrowing systems. So please tune in if you're interested in that as part. Then, then we will also discuss bet, uh, the Beter Leven uh, uh, Keurmerk. So uh, we will follow up on your input yep. in a later session. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Pierre, for joining us. Thank you, Gay, for explaining uh, this practical solution and crunching the business case. René, uh, you can uh, uh, see some deal uh, making coming so. up. And Bart, thank you so much for hosting. But most of all, thank you for uh, watching us and for contributing with all your questions and uh, feedback. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at another Vereike webinar. Bye bye.